for five minutes of questioning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to all our witnesses for appearing before the committee today. We're in the home stretch. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Ms. Colon. Um, in your report to Congress for 2022, you reported that you had 4,634 total resolutions, correct? Uh, maybe. It sounds right. I'd have to go back and look at the data, but probably. Okay. Um, but of the 4,634 total resolutions, you listed cases that you did not have jurisdiction over as a resolution. Yes. Okay. So in fact, of the 4,634 total resolutions you reported, 2,217 of those cases, you either lacked jurisdiction or declined to take the jurisdiction over, correct? Uh Maybe I'd have to go back and look at the data, but I can certainly confirm that for you. Okay. Yeah. I think my math's right on that. Okay. <laughs> but I just want to make sure. So it, it comes out that about 47%, 47.8%, nearly half of the reported total resolutions to Congress are cases that the center decided that they cannot investigate because of jurisdiction issues. So why are half of your total resolutions being reported to Congress as, quote, resolutions, so when by definition, nothing was resolved, and you're not even investigating or taking steps to resolve those cases? So I think it's important to distinguish between those cases that we decline jurisdiction and then those cases that we don't have jurisdiction, right? So a case that we don't have jurisdiction might be like a local high school. Um, and while we are not going through an entire investigation, we are referring that back. And so we do have to track that, right, for the federal government and for, and for others. For the cases that we decline jurisdiction, um, there is a considerable amount of work that is done in order to get us to that place. Many times in a declination of jurisdiction, it may be that we're sending that back to an NGB after we've decided or determined what the membership may look like, or after we've done an initial inquiry to figure out you know, what the details of that case are. So we do track that for that reason, because it's not as simple as saying, oh, we're moving this along, and we but, do nothing. But at the same time, though, I mean, that, it's, it's exceptionally misleading. I, at, at the oh. very least, you could say it is very misleading. I mean, that's basically the equivalent of a sheriff in one county stacking up another county's crime statistics and counting it as his own as, as, as a resolution. I think even clarifying, I mean, reporting to Congress, it's, it's a very serious matter. That right there should be clarified because clearly these aren't resolutions and they're being counted as such. And so this, the statistics and the data are painting a picture that is not accurate is, I think, the point we're getting to. So I think maybe labeling is a concern that we have and that needs to be clarified. That needs to be addressed. Um, and I guess moving forward, would you at the center commit to removing cases that you don't have jurisdiction over as resolution before reporting the statistics to Congress because it paints a skewed, a skewed picture. So that's what we're actually working on right now, right? So as part okay. of this top to bottom review, we're also taking a very close look at how we manage data um, and what those systems are internally to better be able to tell a story, right? Because at the end of the day, they are a lot of numbers, right? But we're not really sharing or kind of explaining well, like what a trend looks like. And so that's a big piece of what we're focused on right now. When will that be complete? It's a long process. Um, so right now, we just actually just hired a data engineer about mm, six weeks ago okay. um, to help us sort of uh, figure out where the issues were. And so we anticipate that that's probably like an eight-month process. So how about we say by the end of the year, this is cleared up? Because in Congress, people just like to work on things, and then it never gets solved. So how about we say at the end of the year, we have an actual definitive change in the way that these are labeled? We will do our best. We're going to hold you accountable to that. You, yes, you can hold me accountable for us doing our best. Yes. Well, <laughs> our, our best doesn't satisfy that, but we're, we're going to, we'll bring you back if that's the case. Um, I'm going to shift. Ms. Shim, thank you for appearing before the committee today. Do you have anything to say about the total number of resolutions that are reported to the center? And if cases does not take jurisdiction, should they be included? Can you weigh in on this? Yes, I share your sentiment that it is misleading, and it's confusing for us as NGBs, as well as claimants and respondents. Um, I also may quickly take this opportunity to raise another concern that we have, that we're seeing it, a trend, an uptick in what's called informal resolutions, um, which is another a, a path where they, the Center for Safe Support does not investigate. Um, rather, they call the respondent, and if the respondent takes responsibility and acknowledges that they um, may be engaged in misconduct or they are apologetic, that they will then um, 
close the case in an informal resolution, um, which in our opinion is not a resolution because there was no investigation. Um, and th those cases are concerning. Some of those cases are sex assault cases. Sound, sounds like the, the situation is ripe for some legislative action. Uh, we agree, thank you. Uh, with that, with, with, uh, that, Mr. Chairman, my time has expired, I yield. Gentlelady yields back and now uh, the ranking member and I are gonna take a couple more minutes for questions, uh, Ms. Castor. Well, thank you. Uh, and Ms. Kamek, to, to your point, there is a broad outreach effort going